I'm Wheeler Winston Dixon, James Ryan Professor of Film Studies at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, and this is Frame by Frame. I'm going to talk briefly here about the career of Thomas Edison, who is not the inventor of motion pictures, although he loved to be thought so. Other people like William Fries Green, Augustin Le Prince, the Lumiere brothers were creating cameras of their own. Edison used these components and basically created his own camera, which he soon quickly patented with other minor modifications. But what's interesting to me about Edison is he's the master exploitationist of the cinema. If the Lumiere brothers are the documentarists and Georges Méliès was interested in fantasy and special effects, Edison was interested in money. He was interested in basically selling as much as he possibly could, and so his films are very sensational. We have films like Ella Lola's Turkish Dance, Sandow Flexing His Muscles. We can also thank him for the first motion picture advertisement for Dewar's Scotch Whiskey, The Execution of Mary Queen of Scots, and of course, one of the first Westerns, uh, The Great Train Robbery, directed by Ebenez Porter in 1903. If you look at The Great Train Robbery, it's got about nine or ten killings in it, and it's very violent. And Edison basically saw that this was what the public wanted, and he would make sure that the public got what the public wanted. He also later tried to form a monopoly, which was called the Trust, where he gathered lots of film companies together and claimed that he had the sole patent on motion picture production, and that you had to pay him five cents a foot for every film that you screened and or shot with Edison's equipment. Eventually, of course, this reached the Supreme Court, where the Supreme Court ruled the Edison Trust was, in fact, a monopoly, and the Trust went out of business. But Thomas Edison was the master exploitation artist of early cinema, and of course a brilliant inventor in his own right with many other inventions to his record. But in the cinema, he's best remembered as the person who decided that cinema had to pay for itself. So we have the beginnings of the commercial aspect of cinema, which continues to this day. I'm Wheeler Winston Dixon, and this is Frame by Frame.